All right, we got a problem. We're missing a body. Anybody see a dead guy walking? He is risen. He is risen. All right, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, happy Easter. Thank you all for coming. Uh, thank you for joining us online. And what a day it is. Do you have enough sunshine? Are, are you warm enough? All right, shout out to all those who came this morning at the freezing hour of 7 a.m. But we did see the sunrise. And uh, so, th so thanks for that. Um, hey, uh, real quick, let me uh, think. First of all, thank you, thank you, thank you to all the people that helped make the eggs extravaganza extra, extra, extravagant. Um, boy, what a day we had yesterday. Um, so many people came and just meeting new people. And um, I don't know if you've ever seen an um, egg slingshot before. They do explode. And um, I'm not sure if you're driving up the driveway, we tried to clear it off. It looks like an egg massacre um, at the top as you're driving it. So if you just look to the left and the right. But, uh, but a good time. Uh, again, just lots of fun with eggs and also the gospel message. So uh, we're building bridges and we'll build a bridge um, any way we can. Um, if I can, just to let you know that, uh, some of the things we're going to be doing today. Paul... Um, is a Jew, and, um, and he's also has a Roman citizen, so he has a heart for, God sends him out to the um, non-Jewish people. He goes to Greeks, and um, I believe uh, Mars Hill, where they have a statue for all these different gods. And you'd think he'd be offended, but he, and he wants to reach them with the one true God, and what he does is he sees the unknown God. So he's going to use their culture, where they are, Make a bridge and get them from there to Jesus Christ. And we're going to do that today as we use an Easter bunny. Because I know some of you are like, oh, I'm not sure. We're using what is in the culture, what is in the world, and we're going to build a bridge. Because you know what? Every bunny needs Jesus. Amen? <laughs> All right. Well, we're going to build on that as we go, but we're going to continue on. Um, hey, James, what's today? Thank you, James. It's Easter today, everyone. And um, he's too humble to tell you it's his birthday today. Uh, so, uh, and, and we got a lot of great things coming up. Um, we had Paula's birthday on Friday. So uh, happy, happy, happy. Uh, we also had Debbie's birthday. We embarrassed her at the egg extravaganza yesterday. So thanks for that. And uh, Taylor's birthday is coming up on Thursday, correct? And um, we're going to have a baptism next Sunday if you all can make it. So uh, just want to throw that out there. We're going to have um, some great stuff happening. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give you, I didn't even talk it over with them yet. Well, I got to go, with, you know, they're in charge. But if they're okay with it, we're going to do a Lion King baptism. Now, maybe you've never seen the Lion King baptism, but... You will never be the same if, if we're allowed to, you know, and I'm not putting the pressure on. But. Yes, we're going to, you know the scene. But anyway, but in a Christian way. It's just a, of course, right? All right, well, anyway, uh, some real quick announcements. Um, there's a plant sale going on. Um, if you need some plants for uh, springtime or for Mother's Day, um, it's on the table right outside there. We would love for you to um, help with that. And, um, oh, the flowers. Oh, how about it for Joanne? Yeah. She not only plays the organ for us today, she makes the place uh, special. Um, she just makes worship extra special. So thank you for all the time that you give to that. And thank you all for um, who um, bought flowers. Uh, we're going to have this up on the front pew. If you forgot what you ordered... Um, we actually have the actual slip, um, but Cindy, uh, very digitally, double-checked it. This list will be down there if you want to take your flowers home and just check it off that we know you got the right ones. And um, if it, somebody doesn't have pick up theirs, I'll try to keep it alive until um, when you can get here, but um, I'm not that good at that, just putting that out there. Um, so that's the plant sale and the flowers. Um, real quick, we have family fun time after church. Now, I don't want to be rude. It's Easter, so we're not going to stay here till 12, all right? 
but uh, but we want to have some fellowship afterwards. We got some fun with eggs, and you, you all know this pretty much, but I just want to let people know. You know how cool our church is? We have a real bunny, not just on Easter. We have a real bunny every Sunday, amen? amen. Because you know why? Every bunny needs Jesus. Okay, so we're going to bring up the bunny in a little bit, um, but just... If you want to see the bunny on Easter, come with the family fun time, and uh, you can, they can hold the bunny, correct? Yeah, yeah, we, we, we share the bunny. Um, just putting it out there, we're not sure. 99% the bunny's potty trained. 99%. Just, I just got to put the disclaimer out there in case. All right, um, on Monday, we're starting a new Bible study. I know we got some fans of... Dr. David Jeremiah does a great teaching. We got a new one caught up. We're going to be slaying the giants in your life. And there are some big giants. Now, it might not be Goliath, but I would say these giants are even bigger than Goliath. How about the giant of fear? The giant of worry? There's a whole bunch of giants, but on Monday, we're going to tackle the giant of fear. You don't have to be afraid. And we're going to go into the Bible and study that. That's 11 a.m. on Monday. On Wednesday, we have our prayer time, 530 in the chapel. And some people say, like, why do you do all these things? I mean, you list so many things. It's because we're not just Sunday people. We love that we're Sunday people. We are a community of believers, and we want to meet all the time as we can, as time will allow, because we don't want to do life alone. You weren't meant to do life alone. I'm going to tell you a little secret. You can go online and get a better sermon, just being honest. You can get online and almost get as good music, but not quite as good music. All right? But I'll tell you what you're not going to get online. The interaction, the community that we have here. And that's why we're so glad to have a community of people doing life together. And that's why we have all these things that we do so that you don't have to do life alone because you weren't meant to do life alone. So again, back on Wednesday, we're having prayer at 530. Saturday, the men are meeting at 7 a.m. And on um, it's also Saturday from 9 to 12, it's spring. It's time to clean up the church. We're getting a dumpster and we're doing some things. We need some help with just uh, getting the church all ready and, and uh, gussied up. Is that a word? Yes. Okay, we want to be gussied up for um, Pentecost is coming too. All right, next big date on the calendar there. Mother's Day at 2 and all that. So um, let me, uh, here's some dates I want you to save. Who likes a free lunch? Yeah, okay. Well, Wednesday, April 19th is our senior lunch. And if you'd like to bring something, there's a sign-up sheet in the back. Not required. Um, and it's just a lunch and feature in our seniors. There's no age limit. We're not carding at the door. You don't need your AARP card to get in, okay? <laughs> so if you want to come, um, just come and have some fun. All right? Now, we're taking a break from our Chosen um, series where we have there. But we'll start that up next Sunday if you want to watch the show. A free dinner. And that's at 5.30, and at 6.15, we'll come here in the comfy chairs and seats and watch the final episode. We're doing season two. You can watch it at home, but you don't get the big discussion that we have here about all that's going on. And that's something special that happens here. But please, watch it at home. Season three is all out. Binge it. Watch it all. You'll be blessed. Um, okay, so Saturday, date to save. Hold up sign. We need your help. Yard sale, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We need people that week to help set up stuff. We need people to price stuff. We need people to set up tables. We need people to break it down. Um, there's a sign-up sheet also in the hallway there, if you can. Or just call the office in Texas and let us know. Again, we, just like yesterday, you see, there's no way any, a few people can do it. And, and I thank you, a lot of you, a lot of you just showed up and said, hey, I don't want to be here, but, but I'm here if you need me. And, you know, cause, and I love the honesty of it. And if you don't need me, I'm going home. Okay, and that's okay because you checked in. So thank you for that. Okay, because that's, I'll take that. Because that's, yes, George. Twenty second. And all of the signs we put around the community say Saturday the twenty second. All right, we're gonna change it to Saturday the twenty second. It's all right because you know what? Some people think we use um, chat. What's that? Chat um, artificial intelligence. 
Some people think I use that for my sermons. Might be true. Some people think we use that for the... No, it's not true. We're, we're still using humans, not robots. So, no, but that's what's nice. I'm glad to know when we see... Because you know what? We are a church of imperfect people who serve a perfect God. If you think you're perfect, don't come here because you're going to ruin it. Okay, so we're imperfect people serving an imperfect God. And um, I love that we show it every day. You'll probably see it happen more and more. But thank you for the update, George. Saturday. No, yeah, I'm just going back to the yard sale. I threw the thing away. The 22nd. The 23rd is another special day. That's the Sunday. That's uh, the Thorsons. Uh, Steve and Becky are missionaries. They're going to be here for a missionary Sunday. Um, so um, we would rather you stay after church because they want to give a whole presentation during our family fun time. So that's the 23rd. Um, are there any other announcements? Because uh, we know why you came today, to worship God. And, and this is what we love to do. We don't just do it on Sundays, but it's so glad when we can do it all together. We worship God every day by everything we do. We give glory to God. But now that we're all together, Mary Ann, do you think they're ready to worship God? All right, then let's worship God, everybody. Uh, while she's coming up, there's Easter books out there. Um, take as many as you like. Um, I got more down in the front pew if they run out. So uh, Easter books for any of the kids or anything that you want. Mary Ann, bring... <laughs> yes, you never know what you're going to see up there. That's true. This one's tempting, so wait till kids' time. If good morning, um, please stand if you're if you're able and join me in the call to worship. I'm all thrown off. The tomb is empty, and darkness has lost. No more do we have to fear. He is victorious, and so are we. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Join in our opening hymn number 302. And remember, we only get to sing these songs once a year, and they're probably always my favorite when we sing them. So I want to hear everybody sing, Christ the Lord is risen today. <coughs>
Let us pray. Lord Jesus, having reflected on your suffering this past week and now experienced the joy of what you accomplished on Easter, we are filled with gratitude at the extent of your love for us. We desire to embrace the abundant life you died to give us. We don't have to entertain negative thoughts or fears or focus on our nation's problems anymore because we now have access to your power, your peace, and your strength as we rest in you, allowing you to take complete control. We can be your constant presence as, your, as you minister to us and guide our every step. Jesus, we choose to thank you by embracing your finished work that gives us abundant life now, no matter what we face, and eternal life with you in the future. Thank you for loving us that much. We praise your powerful name. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. All righty. The bunny, the bunny. Oh, man. Hold on. Hold on, Easter. Not yet. It was one second. Um, but but I, we, a few weeks ago, we got to meet Matt. And, and Matt was a great guy. And all. I want you to know that some of you people are special, that you have a twin. Well, Matt has a twin, and I'd like you to meet the other part of Matt's twin, Taylor, do you want to come on up and bring your buddy with you? Yeah, yeah. Now, um, Taylor's, I love Taylor. She's so special. Um, she comes to church on Sundays. And, and again, as I told you, she gives us a reminder. Do you want to take vanilla out? Um, she gives us a reminder every Sunday, not just on Easter, that every bunny needs Jesus. And... Um, this vanilla is great, and vanilla, um, again, I love that we have a church that um, is loving. Do you feel loved here? Yes. And do you enjoy coming? Mm -hmm. And again, and that's part of um, uh, this, uh, what, is what God does, and God gives us wonderful pets and stuff. So I'm glad that you uh, bring your pet and share it with us because it makes it extra special. And, and again, it's just a, a wonderful reminder that every Needs Jesus. All right, so um, if you get a chance and you want to, um, they're okay to hold the, um, or a pet or whatever. Um, has vanilla ever bite anybody? Recently? <laughs> well, okay, all right, well, if your finger looks like a carrot, maybe uh, don't make it look like a carrot. Okay, well, thank you. How about a round of applause for Taylor and uh, all the special things and... Um, and, and we have another bunny here today. You want to come on up, uh, Mr. Easter? All right. Well, I'll come down to you. How's that? Now, again, as we talked about, um, Easter can be a lot of fun. And, and this is a really fun bunny. And if you want to have... Whoa, see? Bunny, bunny likes to get me back because I have a lot of fun with bunny. But, uh, but we're going to behave right now for a minute. But um, the bunny can be a lot of fun. But we never want the bunny to be a distraction. Now, we can have fun, and that's part of the story of Easter. But if Easter is just about a bunny, then just like this is hollow. <laughs> You're not hollow, but, but my Easter bunny, my chocolate Easter bunny is hollow. So if our Easter is just about the Easter bunny, then your Easter is going to be hollow. But if your Easter is about the cross, if that's the real meaning of Easter, and if that's what we, we can have fun with the bunny, but if it's about the cross, then your Easter is not hollow. Because I want to tell you something. We can have fun with the bunny, but the bunny did not die for you. The bunny didn't go onto the cross and pay the debt for all the wrong things I've done. The bunny gives me eggs. The bunny gives me candy. Thank you, bunny. But Jesus went on the cross and died on the cross. 
and then rose again today to prove to us he's the son of God and that it is finished and that if I trust in Jesus, that if I'm going to follow him, does the Easter Bunny follow Jesus? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. So if I follow Jesus and listen to Jesus, have Jesus in my heart, then I will go to heaven because that's what Easter is all about. Not hollow, but faith-filled belief in our one who truly gave us Easter. So thank you, Easter Bunny, for doing what you do, pointing everybody to Jesus by letting everyone know that every needs Jesus. All right, so thank you. How about a round of applause for our Easter Bunny, who will also be around later if you like. And uh, is this for Mary Ann? I'll leave this up here for you, Mary Ann. All right, so... Uh, um, knock, knock. Arthur. Are there any Easter jokes? Well, yes, there are. Um, <laughs> why did the Easter bunny go on strike? He wanted better celery. What do you get if you cross a frog? With a rabbit. A bunny ribbit. Or, you know, they, they, they all work. They all work. There's no one right, right. Yeah. You're almost sad that you do that, right? Why don't we see dinosaurs at Easter? Because their egg stink. You didn't expect that, did you? All right, last one, but don't, yeah. I told you they loved them, Karen. She, was, she wasn't sure. What does the Easter Bunny say before eating his meal? Let us pray. Let us pray. God, we thank you for today. We thank you for the things that we can use that can point to you. That we can make a bridge to wherever somebody is, whether big or small, and use it for your glory. So Lord, thank you for redeeming all the things of the world and using them to glorify you. We ask that you would bless your words, not my words, but your words, Lord, and may all of, may you be resurrected in all of our hearts. Amen. All right. Hey, um, do we have junior church? I'm not sure if I excused you as the junior church there. I, all right. We have junior church, um, something special. So if you want to go to junior church and not have to listen to a boring sermon, now would be the time for the what we call the exodus. Um, now for you, you lucky ones, I got something special for you. Do you want to hear some scripture? Do you want to hear some words of God today? All right. Uh, this is from Luke chapter 24. We're going to start at 13 and we'll see how far we go. Now that same day. Now what day would that be? Easter. Okay, so, so earlier in this is the whole scene where the women come up to the, um, the stone rolled away. And you, you know all that part. We're going to take you to Easter story Part two, okay? So part two here. Now that on that same day, two of them were going to a village named Emmaus. Now some of y'all know where Emmaus is, right? But, but here it says it's only seven miles from Jerusalem. So I don't know. Got, got fact checked that one. Um, they were talking with each other about everything that had happened. Now, flashback. Good Friday, okay? Everything that happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, guess what? Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. He is risen today. Let's go for an Easter walk. I'm going to walk with these people. Um, oh, wait a minute. Verse 16 starts off with what? But... But they were kept from recognizing him. 
they were kept from wreck. This seems to be a theme. Because if uh, perhaps you remember the earlier story, Mary Magdalene went to the garden and did not recognize Jesus. She thought he was a gardener. Which I'm just going to throw a little tidbit out there. Maybe he is a gardener in the sense that he created the Garden of Eden. And maybe in the sense that uh, the book ends in a garden, a paradise, um, a garden restored. So maybe he is a gardener. And he was a gardener. But he's much more than a gardener. He's my Lord and my Savior. And I hope he's your Lord and your Savior too. So verse 17 says, Jesus, he asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? Now, April Fool's Day was a couple weeks ago, but I'm almost sensing that this is the first April Fool's joke. That it was on April Fool's Day. Jesus is ready to prank these guys. He disguised himself spiritually, I believe. Um, some people believe he cloaked himself, but I, that's just too... Because he breaks the bread and he disappears later. So I mean, so I think it's a spiritual thing. They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named, we're just going to say Cleo. Okay, is that okay? Are you okay with Cleo? Or do you like Leo? Leo with a C. Cleo. Cleopas asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem? Remember, it's Passover. So a lot of people go to Go to Jerusalem for Passover. Who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? Jesus, the practical joker. Okay? And, and as we've been watching The Chosen, you know he's got that smile that he does. And he knows what's about to happen, whether it's a healing, whether it's something about to get. Sometimes he even winks. So you can see Jesus, he's like, oh, what things? Like, He's the eyewitness accountable. He's playing along. He's working with them. He's got a big wahoo about to come up. So he's playing it straight. Oh, about Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet. Oh, ouch. Ouch. Was. You just put Jesus in the past tense. Because Jesus is the great I am. He's not in the past tense. He's present Something, uh, English teachers help me out. He, I'm not sure what that, how that verb is, but he is always, I am, not I was. And I mention that because some of you are living in a what was world. You remember the good old days? You know, it was much better then, and I get that. But we can't live in a what was world. It's good to remember our past, but we can't live in our past. We live today. Today, Jesus Christ is risen. Hallelujah. So let's be careful of what was. Let's focus on I am. He was a prophet. He was powerful in word and deed. Well, I guess so, because you know what? He is the living word. He is the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. Verse 20, the chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had, there's that past tense, we had hoped. And um, maybe you understand that feeling. You had hopes too. You had hopes that things would work out. They had hopes that things would work out the way they, they thought they would work out. And they didn't work out the way that they thought they worked out. Now, they're going to work out even better, but they don't know that yet. And maybe you've had hopes that you thought now would be better than before. And maybe it's not right now. Maybe you had hoped that you'd be making more money now. And maybe you're not. Maybe you'd hoped that you'd be cured and healed. Or somebody you love or know would have been cured and healed. And has not been yet. And your hopes are diminishing. Maybe you had hoped that um, you would overcome your struggles. You're like, I got these struggles and I'm still struggling with my struggles. The good news is that um, even though they had hope, the hope of the world, Jesus Christ is walking with them right now. So even though they thought they had hope, hope is present, hope is with them, hope is walking with them, and that is the same that is true for us today. 
Hope is with us. Hope is walking with us. Hope is not gone. So do not give up hope. That is the Easter story that comes true. Um, we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more, it is the third day. Note that. They knew it was the third day. Why did they? Well, they're good accountant, right? So I'll give them that. Since all this took place, in addition, all right, get ready to cheer. Some of our women amazed us. How about it? Guys, do our women amaze us? Guys, that was a big chance <laughs> for brownie points. Because you know, the women have been stepping it up for this holiday, working hard. So we're going to just rewind. <laughs> Some of our women amazed us. How about a Tabor, guys? Are our women amazing? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank God, Johnny. We'll rehearse next time. That's why it's rehearsals. They went to the tomb, our amazing women. Um, hello, where were the guys? Um, now, I can tell you, I don't know about, I don't know about over in um, Israel, but it was cold this morning. And um, uh, I, I was tempted just to stay in bed. Um, and that's what I think these guys did. They stayed in bed, or they stayed where it was warm, or they stayed inside. The women went to do the work. But verse 23, they didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels. Wow. Um, when's the last time we saw angels? Jesus' birth? I'm not, you know, I'll, I'll leave that to my Bible nerds. When's the last time we've seen angels? Maybe, maybe when he was born. We seen a vision, they seen a vision of angels, angels who said he was alive. Well, you can't believe angels, can you? I mean, you know, they're angels. Uh, angel means messenger. So they came to give a message. Then some of our companions, we're not even going to name them, uh, because this is, um, what do we say, Luke? Yeah, okay, so Luke's not even going to name them, because there's a problem with naming them and other ones, because somebody was um, the disciple Jesus loved if you ever pick up on that. But we talked about that. We understood it. Um, then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it just as the woman had said. Duh! Oh, gee, who can believe a woman? Um, but they did not see Jesus. Do you see the irony here? They're reporting the facts that their companions did not see Jesus. And yet, who are we walking with? Um... They're walking, they're telling Jesus that, oh yeah, those other guys, they didn't see Jesus. Yet, here you are, Jesus, walking with us. Um, so I think a little point there is, um, we are good, amen, at pointing out the blindness in others. Um, but I may have a log in my own eye that I'm dealing with, but we don't need to go there, right? All right, amen, we're going to move on. Um, verse 25, he said to them, now I'm glad Jesus never said this to me. Um, now, if, this, if you feel this sticking to you, then you let it stick. If you say, no, this is not me, you just let it bounce off. Because uh, I'm, I'm just reading you the word of God. The Holy Spirit convicts. He said to them, not you, to the disciples, how foolish you are. The two guys walking. or We don't even know if it's two. We just knew one was Cleopas. He said to them, how foolish you are. And it's interesting the way the Bible uses the word foolish. It doesn't mean stupid. It just means one who has a lack of belief. How foolish you are and how slow to believe. Now, does that describe anybody you know? Do not point. Um, because when we point, you know, the other fingers point. Slow to believe. Um, so their problem is they're foolish and they're slow to believe. All that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer, notice the order here, have to suffer first. We get Good Friday before we get an Easter. And that's a lesson for us in life. There's going to be struggles. There's going to be bad times. There's going to be terrible things that happen. Amen? But Jesus says, I overcame them. You're going to have troubles. Amen? But I overcame them. John 16, 33. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter in his glory? Um, if I may, maybe these two walking people, not Jesus, are, could be, 
if I may, without offending anybody, symbolic of us. They had expectations. Anybody here have expectations? And then bad stuff happens. Some very, very bad stuff happened. Um, but they are, um, I'm not sure about this. Because I don't know the Bible speaks to us, but it brings up a curiosity. Why are these two walking to Emmaus? Wasn't there a something saying, stay in town and wait for the promise, the Holy Spirit and all that? And, and they're walking away, and they even knew it was the third day, and they didn't wait for the third day. Why are they walking away from where they were supposed to be? Now, maybe I'm missing something, and maybe you know, because so let me know. And, but let's just presume, I'm not sure what they're doing, but I know they're not staying in Jerusalem. They're walking to Emmaus. So if I may, I'm going to put out there before the jury, they're going in the wrong direction on Easter. Luke includes this passage, I believe, for a very important reason. Because Jesus is alive. He's raised from the dead. And where does he choose to be on this Easter day? Jesus is making time in his Easter resurrection schedule. All right? You just came back from the dead. Where are you going? Me? I'm going to Pilate. Boo. That's all. I'm, and then I'm moving on. Okay? But Jesus is better than I am. He says, I got more important things, Pastor Ed. I got two people walking in the wrong direction. Because you know who Jesus is? Jesus is also the good shepherd. And the good shepherd goes after those who are in the wrong direction. Jesus is also the good shepherd. And he said, you know what the good shepherd also does? The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. That's how you know he's the good shepherd. So you may have turned your back on God. And I think we've all experienced that, but we're not all going to admit it. But hear me. God has not turned his back on you. Um, tell the person next to you, God reached me. God can reach you. All right. So depending on, hopefully you got one each way, but I don't know. Um, it's hopefully. And I pray that you feel, though, that God is reaching you now because you've got stuff going on in your life. You've got Good Friday, bad type of stuff. And too often we live in the Good Friday not realizing the Easter's coming. Now for them, it came in three days. And even better than that, it was three Jewish days. So in our way of counting, it was Saturday, Sunday, two days, because we count exclusively. They count inclusively. They count the first day as one. But anyway, three days. But do not give up, even though it's taking more than three days. That's just this Easter story. But there's plenty of other stories in the Bible where it takes a long time. And we'll talk about that in a minute. <clears throat> now somebody put a sign out in the hallway that says, Amazing Grace. And that's what it is. Amazing grace that Jesus will come to you and meet you where you are. You don't have to clean yourself up. You don't have to say, well, I'm going to start going to church. Now, that's fine. But Jesus wants to meet you where you are. He loves you enough not to leave you there. Jesus is not going to leave these two just walking in the wrong direction. He wants to meet you where you are no matter where you are. There's nothing you can do that Jesus will not follow you and reach out for you, no matter where you are physically, mentally, and we talked about that, we can be lost mentally and struggling mentally, or spiritually. So any of those places, Jesus is walking with you, reaching out for you. And um, so it reminds me of a song. And he walks with me and he talks with me. And he tells me, I am his own. So hear that loud and clear. You are Jesus' own. He died on the cross for you. Personalize that. Hear your name in that. Um, so what's bizarre, um, that, again, I mentioned that they mentioned it was the third day and they weren't willing to wait. Um, but that's what happens. If we're honest... 
and we want to be honest, because let's just be real, we lose hope because we don't like to wait. And when we wait, we're disappointed, and we're like them. We say, we had hope. And when we lose hope, do we also lose faith? And some of you know somebody like that, or maybe that's you. You lost faith. And maybe that's one reason that they can't see Jesus. Maybe. Because I'm, I'm going to throw out to you there um, a Hebrews, uh, I think it's 11.6, I have to look it up. Um, it says, without faith... It is impossible to please God. So you have to have faith. Because you might say, well, seeing is believing. That's not faith. That's, that's what the world wants. Jesus says believing is seeing. So you got to believe so you'll see. So let's be careful because we have lost hope and some of us have lost faith. And that's a dangerous place to be. But hear the message of Easter. Bad stuff happens. Remember Jesus said, in this life you will have trouble. And for some of you, those are capital letter trouble. Good Friday happens. But don't lose hope. Jesus is risen from the dead. We don't live on Good Friday. We are people of the resurrection. We have belief in resurrection power. Jesus has overcome the world. That's the Easter story. He turned it around in three days. I don't know about your story. It's probably going to take more than three days. How many days did it take us to get into our mess? Maybe my mess is my fault. Maybe it's others' faults. Maybe it's nobody's fault. But let's give it time. Let's not lose hope. Let's not lose faith. Because God doesn't leave us on Good Friday. Easter came. Keep faithful. Hebrews 11, 6. Yeah, without faith it's impossible to believe God. And if I could slip in one more song, because it's not Easter, unless you slip in a bonus song. Don't stop believing. Because you know what? We're all on a journey. They're on a journey going in the wrong direction. But they shouldn't have stopped believing. That one was for you, Paul. Here's a thought. Good Friday had to happen so that there could be an Easter resurrection. If we don't have death, we don't get resurrection. If we don't have a bad time, we don't get the good times. And again, as I'm going to keep saying it, because I want to reach out to you, some of y'all are in a bad time. But hang in there. Have hope. Don't give up. When you don't understand why, because a lot of people are like, well, why is this happening, Pastor Ed? I get it. But here's a little fact. Um... My brain, now your brain's better, my brain is only so big. Um, it can only understand so many things. But you know what? God is infinite. God has a big brain. He says, my ways are not your ways. You can't understand all the things the guy with all power and ever present and all that comes along with being God, your human brain can't understand it. So you're not going to understand the why. But all I'm going to do is ask you to understand to trust me. Remember when we talked about going through the wilderness for 40 days? The lesson of the wilderness for the Moseses, Moses and his people, do you trust me? I'm going to give you bread. Do you trust me? I'm going to give you quail. Do you trust me? You're going through hard times. You're going through wilderness. Do you trust me? And that's all Jesus wants. He wants you to trust him. And you can trust somebody who died for you on the cross. That, that is proof enough. Because you're like, I want more proof. What more can somebody do than to say, I died for you. That's all I can give. And that's enough. So um, I'm just going to end it on this. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain. What did he do? He washed it white as snow. My sin, my stain, he washed it white as snow. God, I'd ask that you would bless these message that people would have hope and have faith and trust in you, Lord. May that be our resurrection power today from the Holy Spirit. May that be the Easter gift for everyone. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, now.
Are you ready to sing a song? Will you sing along? Would you like to sing because he lives? Hymn number 364. Let's please stand as we sing because he lives. What does that mean? All right, the song tells us, because he lives, what are we going to do? is the time in our service where we have an opportunity to share with one another our prayer concerns or to give praise to God for the things that we've seen him doing in our lives. Um, Jack has the mic, so if you raise your hand, he'll bring the mic to you so those at home can hear also and pray for you as well. So do we have any prayers or praises that we'd like to share this morning? Um. Please keep my friend Stephanie in prayer, uh, just recently diagnosed with colon cancer. She has her surgery coming up on April 19th. She's my age, and um, she takes care of a lot of her family. Uh, so 
it's hard for her to accept help from others. So just that she would feel God's presence in this time. Any others? Um, I had heard from uh, Mark Davies yesterday. Um, he was having trouble with his car and really had hoped to be here for Easter services, but um, he just asked, he said to give a praise that his health is, seems to be getting better. Um, he's really been struggling with poor health lately, and so praise that his health is improving, but also was pr asking prayers for strength as he continues to face, it seems, one hip obstacle after another. So um, prayer for him, too. I have an important meeting on Thursday. Uh, just prayers that um, the meeting um, goes good. Thanks. I'd like to ask for continued prayers for Samantha. We were in the ER twice this week. So hopefully mm -hmm. things will straighten out with the new rheumatologist. Continue prayers for Carol, please. I just want to praise God that uh, Dick Hollingsworth was at our sunrise service this morning and uh, just praising God for that. And please, uh, let's continue to pray for his health. Another positive thing that I wanted to give God praise for uh, last week. Vicki, uh, I asked for prayer for Sarah with her mm -hmm. surgery. Uh, she was given two options, A or B. God said, let's do C. And okay. all they did is shave a bone spur off. So she's doing just great. Amen. Uh, Any others? I just want to praise the Lord that we serve a God that is acquainted with our griefs and sorrows, that he walked this earth and experienced everything that we experienced. And so we can come to him with everything that's on our hearts and know that he understands. Amen. And thankful to be here today and celebrating the risen Christ with you all. Okay. Just wanted to ask for continued prayers from my cousin Bernadette. She's rehabbing from her knee surgery, and it's a long road ahead of her. Um, but I also have a praise, because I have both my daughters here with me at Easter. And I know we were praying for Steph earlier, but we also have another Steph that we've been praying for, a um, young 10-year-old that's uh, dealing with leukemia, correct? So uh, if you're on the prayer chain, you know her a tragic and heartbreaking condition that she was hoping to be home, but she's still in the hospital since Christmas, and, but, you know, we're still going to keep praying for Steph. Any others? All right, let's go before the Lord. Lord God, we are so thankful for you and all that you've been doing in our lives, but especially for this day when we are reminded of what sacrifice you did um, by sending your son to earth to die on a cross for us. Thank you, Lord, that you love us that much <clears throat> and that we can remember this time of year to help us um, through our life's journey when we struggle. So, Lord, we just ask that you would be with um, Karen's friend Stephanie today, and uh, we just pray that you would um, just provide the healing that she needs and give her peace as she awaits this surgery and help it to do exactly what it needs to do so that she can um, not suffer from cancer anymore, Lord, and we just pray that you would just take that away from her. And Lord, um, we also lift up Samantha to you, and we just ask that you would be with her, Lord, um, 
she continues to suffer from pain and they can't seem to find out exactly what's causing it or what's how to treat it. And so, Lord, we just ask again that you would give the doctors the wisdom that they need in order to provide her healing. And we lift up Tom to you, Lord, for this meeting that he's going to have on Thursday. And we ask that you would surround him, um, give him peace, and <clears throat> give him guidance if he's uh, speaking or whatever way he's participating. Help him to um, make a difference in this meeting and let all the voices be heard and understood. Lord, um, we also lift up Carol to you, who continues to suffer um, from eating disorders, and we just ask that you would surround her and give her all that she needs and the strength that she needs to keep on trying to gain weight and to live her life. And Lord, we do praise you that Dick was able to be at the sunrise <coughs> service this morning, and uh, we just pray your continued healing upon his health. Uh, I know he struggles with, still struggles with some health problems, and we just pray the doctors would have the wisdom to know exactly what to do with him. And Lord, we do praise you that Sarah's surgery went well. And, and we always know that the doctors may seem to know exactly what needs to be done, but we are thankful that you provided the guidance that those doctors needed in order to give her the right surgery. And we just ask that that would do exactly, I mean, she's feeling great now, Lord, that she would continue to feel well and, and <clears throat> not be suffering from pain. So thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in her life. And Lord, we do thank you that you are a part of our lives and you desire to um, be present for each one of us because you know exactly what we're going through, Lord. And we thank you so much for that. And we ask that we would be better at turning to you in the midst of our troubles and trusting you through them. And Lord, we uh, lift up Bernadette to you and we pray that you would give her all that she needs to recover from her knee surgery and the strength to get stronger and do the uh, rehab that she needs to do. And so we ask that you would surround her with strength through this time. And we do praise you, Lord, for families who have children that come home um, on holidays. And we thank you that... Um, that they're just such a part of our life and how special that is, especially for parents when their kids have been away for a while to just return home. So thank you for that. And Lord, we do lift up Steph to you who's suffering from leukemia and we pray that you would also give the doctors the wisdom and knowledge that they need in order to uh, know exactly how to provide the healing that um, she has and for her, uh, how her parents um, desire that for her as well. And so, Lord, um, just surround that whole family through this process. And, Lord, we continue to lift up our leadership of the church and ask that you would provide us the guidance and wisdom that we need to be in ministry, not only in this place, but through our community and throughout the world. We ask all of this in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Would the ushers please come forward for the morning offering?
Lord God, today we remember the great sacrifice that was given on our behalf. Sometimes we take this for granted, but we thank you for being a constant in our lives. As we, as we return our love and gratitude to you, we present our gifts of money and service. Bless all these gifts so that you may continue to reveal yourself to a hurting world. We ask all of this in the precious name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. If you desire prayer, there should be a prayer team over to my right. You can come to them and they will uh, provide prov prayer for you. And our closing hymn is He Lives, number 310. internalize the words that you just sang to that song. And I hope, especially that last part where he says he lives within my heart. I pray that Jesus lives in your heart because of this day. And it says, I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever foes may say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. Just remember that. Let us pray. Lord God, we thank you for the gift of your son, Jesus. We think of that at Christmas, but now, Lord, we celebrate what that was all about and how you brought him to this earth for our behalf. So help us this week, Lord, to share that with others, to encourage others, to offer them hope, because they too can have hope in knowing you. We ask all of this in Jesus' name. Amen.
Have a great week.